Elliot. One one. Boy Korea. What's up? How you doing? <laughs> what you doing? Talking about some jewelry. <laughs> okay, that's new. See you later. What's up, GQ? This is Eliante, and we're here on the rocks. I got the name Eliante from Young Scooter. We went to the studio, and he was just rapping, and that's what fit in the line, and we just ran with that. There's a really famous expression now. Should've went to Elliot. Where did that come from? My quality, my work. You know, you can spot my work compared to a lot of other jewelers' work. I redid a lot of people's pieces. They'll see somebody's stuff is not looking right. They'll be like, man, you should've just went to Elliot. My first big client was Nicki Minaj. I made her a Roman piece. That's when she dropped her album, Roman. Who are some of your clients? Um, Future, Young Thug, 21 Savage, Chris Brown, Lil Uzi, Migos, Cardi B, Lil Wayne, Birdman. I mean, pretty much everybody was popping. So this is my new piece that I actually recently created. It's the E that's on my Eliante. It's a crown on top of it. And I actually had the stones cut in the shape of the crown. And then I created a whole new infinity link for it, which people are starting to buy and copy. Honestly, I don't even know what this costs me because I'm using my own diamonds, you know what I'm saying? I just didn't even calculate. I'm about to sell it though. Really? Yeah, Uzi wants it. He wants to take the two E's out and put a 16 over there. One of my favorite pieces I made was Takeoff's solar system chain. Takeoff's chain is a green light chain. Like, he just gives me the green light. There's no budget behind it, really. He just tells me to get creative and make a masterpiece. He didn't even see the piece till it was ready. And DJ Mustard was the same thing. It was a green light piece. I created him two new Cubans with different style thorns. The ketchup bottle, chasing the mustard bottle. It's really detailed, you gotta see it in person. There's a lot of pieces that didn't make it. You know, I try to gather up as much as I could from this weekend. This is everybody I actually was with, so I took their stuff. Over here, we got offsets, nameplate piece. This was the first piece that I made with a backplate. Everybody used to just do just the letters or the numbers or whatever. So this was the first piece that I did that with, and then I made my piece the same way, but with bigger stones. Now this is like a popular thing. You know, everybody makes their pieces with backplates. This is like a worldwide piece. And you guys seen this piece for sure. This trap house I made for Offset with a custom link. It's a track basically. Cardi hit me up and wanted to get him a gift. She gave it to him for Valentine's Day. He didn't expect it. It was like 275,000. The door actually opens. There's two people inside. Bags of money, there's an oven in there, there's graffiti. There's a lot of detail to it. But the chain idea basically came from railroad tracks behind the bando. Yeah, this is a real place, I guess, where they, you know, handle their business. That's why I had a lot of meaning to Offset. Just a reminder, you know, where he came from. Next to this is just some emerald diamond tennis chains, one carat each. It used to be round diamonds, everybody wanted. And now this is like a new wave, emerald diamonds. They got like illusion set baguette chains that's popular too. These are 300 each. Yeah, if you're watching, you want one, 300 a piece. This is Metro Boomin's piece. This is another green light piece. He had no budget. He just said, make me a crazy CEO Boominati piece. That's what it says, Boominati CEO. All emerald cut diamonds. Each diamond is set like a brick in a real pyramid. And then he got a five carat blue Marquise diamond, GIA certified, 180,000. He had a different Boominati CEO piece, but that was for that time in his career. So you guys seen the other Boominati piece previously, but this is the new one. I knew Metro since like 2013, 14. He came a really long way. I remember his first watch was like a two-tone Rolex. It was like $8,000. And now he got probably like $1 million, I'd say, in watches. And then probably, yeah, we ain't gotta talk about these numbers. But he got some stuff. I take this call? Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. Yo. Yo. We're doing an interview. What are you doing your interview? Damn. Yeah, they got a piece one on one, y'all. <laughs> Alright, bro. So gunner piece, another green light piece. We originally started with a different design and concept. As I was going along with the chain, I just got some more ideas and he just told me green light. Is this one of your favorite chains, bro? Yeah, for sure. Any green light piece is one of my favorite. 
This chain is like about 300,000. It was a lot of work. Like this was all handmade. This is not just the CAD that was printed out. So I got two snakes on this side, two snakes on this side. Blue diamond, about 1.5 carats, heart shape. And then they got the raindrops, pear shapes, just dripping down, you know? That's his thing, drip or drown. How did you come up with the snakes popping out? Honestly, I don't even know. I was just chilling, I was high. <laughs> This is a camo bracelet, Chris Brown's. He actually just gave it to me to get clean, so I got it right here. He started doing the camo on the Miami Cuba link with yellow, white, blue, and pink. So he got a whole necklace matching with it. Uh, the bracelet was like about 50,000, and then he got a necklace. It was about 150. It takes a lot of time. I only have one specific diamond setter who could actually do the camo, so just one bracelet alone takes him like a week. This is some new pieces that we're finishing up right now. This is for a future. So basically this is like his first original FBG piece that I ever made him, but we just made it a little bit more 3D and made him a little bigger for his artist. About five total he got. We made all of them different. He already has one of them that's all white. This one is white and pink, rose and white, it's all rose. And then this one is all yellow. And these are about 35,000 a piece. And then they got Cuban chains with them too. The back says brothers for life and then Eliante underneath. The Marilyn Manson piece with a Mickey Mouse hat and a 16 in the center. I didn't design this piece. Uzi got that like in the beginning of his career. Originally, a different jeweler made it, so he felt like he needed to get an all white one. That one was black and white. I just made him a whole new one. Um, this piece was about 55,000. What other pieces have you done for Uzi? I made him an actual little Uzi, a gun. I made him a shark tooth, a bunch of Cuban links. I made him a bunch of diamond chains. I made his upside down cross that's actually getting rebuilt right now. Yeah, I pretty much did most of his stuff. He got a lot of new stuff on the way too. This is the high bridge pieces. This is A Boogie's personal chain and this is QP's chain. QP is one of the owners of the label. This one's about 150, this one's 50. So this was made for Kodak Black, it says Project Baby. Me and him spoke about this like when he first started popping out. We were talking about making a pacifier chain and then recently he called me and he was like, bro, let's make that pacifier chain. But he wanted it like with blue diamonds and white. I made this for cash. He just called me like a few months before Coachella and he was like, yo, Coachella's coming up, I need something crazy. It was supposed to be a smaller skull chain. And then we ended up getting a little carried away. We got a bracelet to match with it. A ring. And this whole setup was like about 350. Green lights? Yeah, just a green light. He found out at Coachella how much it was. It's crazy. <laughs> I got a whole mechanism inside. That's why everything is working. It's not flimsy or anything. My clients sometimes call me because they can't get the Cubans off because it has like, you know, actual mechanisms in it. Like it has springs inside the Cubans. I was with Lil Wayne last week and he told me his Cubans are the best chains to jump around with because he knows they're not coming off. Let's talk about some watches over here. We got a rose gold paddock, 5711. This guy is worth about 110,000 with no diamonds right now. I style, they're going for like about 150. Prices went up in a lot of these paddocks, Richard Mills, the APs, everything really went up. So many people bought them already, so there's not many around playing and they discontinued a lot of them. So the values went up big time. And this is I style Richard Mill. I just iced one out for fun one day and Future bought it. Everybody started copying the way we did his watch with the baguettes on the side and the Pave one. The cheapest one is 100,000, if you could even find one right now for that price, but about 200,000 to 300,000 is what they're going for. This right here is a stainless steel skeleton. This is one of the rarest APs. The first watch I ever made like this was for 21 Savage. He wanted a watch that nobody had and nobody even dared to ice out one of these because they're so valuable. We created a whole new setting on his watch. It was the crushed honeycomb setting. It just went worldwide. Everybody started doing the same setting. Right now, this watch is going for about 95,000 plain with no diamonds. So the retail on this is 45,000. Then this is the same watch, just in rose gold. Also went up in value, it's about 120,000 right now playing. Then this is a baguette watch, also a skeleton, rose gold. This watch costs a lot of money. It takes a lot of time to make it. Each stone has to get cut perfectly. There's no gaps in any of my watches. This is the Paddock, also a very popular watch. They're going for like about 150 right now. Same situation, discontinued. All right guys, I gotta get back to work. Thanks for checking out these pieces and I'll be seeing you guys again.